For this first project, I am taking some leftover foam core board that I have and I'm just cutting it down to like a rectangular size. And I'm sorry, I didn't even measure this. I just cut it down to a size I thought was good. Um, but in this video today, I am recreating the wood scrap projects that I made a few weeks ago because I know not everyone has scrap wood just laying around. So I wanted to give you some alternative options on how you could still get these same looks with um, using budget friendly materials. Once I have my foam board cut down how I want it, I'm taking various sizes of craft sticks. Some are those really large ones are from Walmart and then I have some that were from Amazon and some that were from the Dollar Tree. So I cut all of the rounded ends off of these and I used my saw to do that. I had my husband help me because I tried to cut them down and then a lot of them just split on me because apparently I needed to hold them in between some actual wood pieces so they wouldn't do that. So anyways, he helped me cut the rounded edges off and now again, just like I did in my video a few weeks ago, I'm playing around with the sizes, cutting some thinner, shorter, longer, however I think it's going to look nice and just arrange these like a puzzle. So after I have everything laid out how I want it, again I am taking some stain and I'm going to stain all of my pieces. So here I used special walnut, I used a whitewash, I used the antique Waverly wax, I used a Valspar antiquing glaze, and then I also used an ebony stain. And a lot of them I also left bare, oh I'm sorry, I also used a sun bleach stain. And then a lot of them I left in their just bare natural tone. So I didn't want to go through a whole lot of this because I did just show this exact same process. I think it was in last week's video, it might have been two weeks ago. Um, but I go a little more in depth there. But once I have all of my pieces stained and then they dry, I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach it to my foam board. Keeping with the budget friendly theme of today's video, I found these little mountain pieces at the Dollar Tree and I'm taking the words off of them. I am going to be using the back sides and we're going to paint them with the brown truffle color by Waverly Chalk Paint. But I did want this back part to, or the technical front part, to be smooth so that when we glue it down it sits nice and flat. While my truffle paint was still wet, I'm going to take some black chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush this over top of the truffle color because I don't want it to be such a stark contrast, but I also don't want it to be entirely blended in either. And then once that part is dried, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and we're going to create our mountain peaks. For our border, I'm going to take some of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and just hot glue them together um, to form the size that I need and then I just paint them with my white Waverly chalk paint. I went back and forth with thinking should I use wood glue or the hot glue and honestly I think the hot glue worked out just fine. I did have to cut a few of the, the tower block pieces down slightly shorter and you'll see that one on the very end is going to be a little bit smaller. Um, so I just measured out how many I needed and cut it down with a saw, a hand saw. So once I had all of my block pieces and they were painted, I'm just again hot gluing these down around the um, border of my what are these popsicle sticks craft sticks i also used a few tumbling tower blocks underneath of this second mountain piece because i wanted it to kind of pop forward and be a little bit off of the frame and i actually didn't end up putting a white border around the bottom of it i was going to but it kind of because i have this one mountain sitting up a little bit higher it didn't really sit right and my husband thought it looked fine without the white border at the bottom so I went along with his decision and left it off. 
And I think this turned out really great and it's a great alternative to get that scrap wood look without having actual scrap wood. And for this one, I am recreating that shim wreath that I wanted so badly to work and did not. I figured out I did need a base to glue those shims to. So I'm starting out with some more of this foam core board and I, am, I just traced something I had in my house that was a circle and I cut that out. Then I cut the circle again so that I would just have a little thin ring. So for these, again, I am using those giant popsicle or craft sticks that you can find at Walmart. I end up using the exact same colors that I used in my first video as well. And I have four sets of, well, I started out with five halves of my craft sticks, but I do end up needing six. And that's the same amount that I used in my last video. So I painted all of them with my four colors. I used moss, ivory, ink and then Waverly Wax, the antique Waverly Wax. And you'll see here, I, I didn't completely cover the sticks because I left, I didn't paint the part where like my finger was holding it. And I thought that part would be covered up, but it actually turned out that it wasn't. So I do go back and um, touch that up a little bit. I don't show that, I didn't think it was necessary, but I do just go up back with a tiny little detail paintbrush and fix those little spots. So here I am just gluing it all down to my makeshift wreath form using my foam core board and I just kind of placed them at a slight angle. So the very first one, that very first ivory one that I placed down, I placed it at too much of an angle. So I end up having to like kind of cover that up with something. It didn't look terrible. I mean, you totally could have left it just like this. It looked fine, but the last two pieces just, just didn't sit exactly the, like the way that the rest of the wreath does. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. But I'm just gonna work my way all the way around, placing all of my craft sticks at a slight angle. So here you can see I am placing that last craft stick in and they just don't kind of lay the same as the rest of the wreath does. But like I said, it's fine. You could have left it just like that anyways. But I decided to take some really thick burlap ribbon that I have cut it in half because I did want it to be thinner. And then I also cut those little like trim pieces off as well. I am gonna hold on to those though because I'm going to use that to tie my bow together in the center. So I just create a shape like an awareness ribbon and then pinch it down in the center. And that is how I create my simple bows. And I'm sorry I'm kind of out of frame on this part, but I'm also not the best bow maker. So I just kind of do what's easy here. But I'm taking one of those little strips I cut off of the edges tied it around the back and I did wrap it around three times but you completely couldn't even see that part so I left it out. But all I'm going to do is dovetail my edges or my ends up tail oh my gosh my tails of my ribbon and then hot glue it down right over where those little craft sticks like kind of sat a little funny and that's it. I love the way this turned out. I actually really love the rounded edges of the craft sticks rather than them being completely flat. This is what my inspiration was. So it's like this shell decor modern stand thing. And I am going to take um, some foam core board, trace a large circle and cut this out. So when cutting out foam core board, you wanna make sure you have a very sharp knife so that you don't get any wonky, jaggedy edges and that it's nice and smooth. Then I'm gonna take a smaller object and do the same thing, cutting out our smaller circle. Next, I'm taking this icing cake decorating kit that I have, and I'm gonna take my piping bag because this is what we're going to use to get all of our little circles on to our foam core board. So during my bathroom renovation, my husband bought this giant thing of joint compound and we didn't even use half of it. So I figured why not come up with some DIYs that I can create using the leftover joint compound. And I have to give a shout out to my friend Brandy at the DIY struggle because she has a whole video on ways that you can use joint compound to create texture on different materials. And it is awesome. So I'm going to link it for you down below. Make sure you check that out because she totally inspired this idea. So next I'm taking my piping bag 
and we're just going to create the center part just like our inspiration had. So I just put some globs on there and then smoothed it down with my like plastic little spatula here. And then I'm gonna take a comb, just like a hair comb, and that's how I'm gonna get those little lines that you saw in the inspiration image. This worked out perfect. So next I wanna create the little circles and on the inspiration, that one was made out of seashells. I'm assuming it just said shells, so I would imagine those are seashells, but I didn't have seashells and this is what I wanted to use anyways. So I just created varying sizes of circles, some smaller, some medium, some larger, and I just filled it all the way around my circle on both sides. And then I had to let that sit around to dry for about a day, I would say it took for this piece to dry. Next, we're gonna make our base. I'm taking one of these MDF signs that you can find at the Dollar Tree along with one of their larger dowel rods. And I'm gonna paint both of these black. I also cut down, clearly you can see, I cut down that board to make it a little smaller. Next, I need to find the center of my board and we're gonna drill a little hole so that I can put my dowel rod in there and make it nice and secure. Of course, I gotta clean up my space. I love this little vacuum. I will link it down below. It is from Amazon. Then I'm gonna take some wood glue, stick my dowel in there and set it down to dry. So once my sculpture piece is dried, I'm taking like a sanding block and just making sure there's no like really rough spots. And this stuff is really easy to sand so you can mold it to be however you want. Then I'm gonna take my ivory chalk paint and I'm gonna paint everything all over. I did the front and the back and I went in all kinds of different directions to make sure I got into all those little grooves and spaces. Then I'm gonna take my mineral chalk paint and this is like a stencil brush from Target actually, but I love this thing because it's so like frayed that it's perfect for distressing something like this. So I just went back and forth with my mineral and my ivory until I got the look that I wanted. The last little step here is to take our hot glue and attach the foam core joint compound board sculpture to the base. And that's it for this one. This was super easy. So the inspiration cost $60 and mine was free because I had all of these materials on hand. Now mine does look a little bit different, but I used colors that would fit my home decor style. You could use your imagination with this. You could do so many different things. Make it blue if you wanted to make a different design. There are so many ways you could make this your own. First, I'm taking my Starbond um, super glue and I started gluing four blocks together to make a long row. Um, my Starbond glue didn't really hold these together too well. It was more like absorbing into the wood. So I do end up switching over to my hot glue and using the Gorilla hot glue sticks and that worked out just fine. I did want a bit more of a secure hold, but this ended up working out just fine for this project. And you're gonna wanna make 40 sets of four blocks each to create this project. So I'm taking this drum lampshade. It's a five inch lampshade that I got from Facebook Marketplace. I believe I got it for about $6. And then I'm also taking this embroidery hoop, which I got from Hobby Lobby. And this is a 10 inch size embroidery hoop. First, I'm gonna take just a scrap piece of wood from my garage, place the lampshade on top, and then separating the embroidery hoops, I placed one on the bottom. Then we're gonna start taking our tumbling tower block sticks is what I'm gonna call them. <laughs> and we're gonna start placing them around the lampshade and around the embroidery hoop. So I started out with one um, like on all four sides so that I could get everything attached. Again, I am just using my Gorilla hot glue stick. And here is an image of what we're actually making. It's a Scandinavian inspired um, lamp shade and they use more like um, paint stir sticks or like thin scrap wood but I thought this would be really cool to make with the tow tumbling tower blocks or Jenga blocks whichever you would like to call them. So I started hot gluing them both to my lampshade and then also to the bottom part of the embroidery hoop. For this second embroidery hoop, I did cut off a small portion of it so that it would be the same exact size as my first embroidery hoop because the second one's always a little bit larger. 
But I'm gonna flip my lampshade upside down now and we're gonna place that second embroidery hoop on the bottom just like we did the first one and we're gonna repeat that same process. So we're gonna start taking our tower block sticks and we're gonna place them right up against the ones that we had first attached and do the same thing, attaching them to both the lampshade and to the embroidery hoop just using our hot glue. And again, this worked out just fine. I don't know that this will hold up for long-term use, especially with this being a lamp, but we'll see. It's gonna, it's gonna work just fine for a decorative purpose. So here I am just going back and forth, placing all of my sticks around. And every time I got to, I would place my sticks going one direction, flip my lampshade over, place them going the opposite direction. And this really did not take long at all to create. Once I had all of my block sticks glued down in place, I am taking this Hema Ikea lamp cord kit. I'm not really sure what these are even called or how to pronounce Ikea names. I think we all struggle with that. But just attaching this to my lampshade and that's it for this project. I absolutely love how this turned out. Now the one I was inspired by on Pinterest was a lot larger but I really love the size of this one that I made. It's still fairly large if you think about it. A 10 inch embroidery hoop is still pretty big. But I have this hanging over top of my desk in my living room and I just absolutely love the little accent. Starting out using my wood glue again, and we are just going to glue three blocks together to form a row. Next, I needed to cut down one of these blocks, and in my last Dollar Tree Jenga block video, I had a bunch of subscribers tell me to use the miter shears. So since I have those, I thought that was a great idea. I thought that would work out perfectly, but I don't have the best hand strength. Um, I'm pretty weak, so you can see I'm struggling a bit here to use these, but I also do think that my miter shears are pretty dull and I probably just need to get a new pair. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself. <laughs> But once I finally got that cut down, I only needed to cut down two, so it wasn't that bad. And then I just glued two additional blocks to it to form another row of three. And these are gonna form a little handle for our basket. So next I'm going to start angling my blocks to form a little arch. And I know what you're thinking, didn't I just do this? And it didn't really work out for me. Well, we're doing it a little different here. And this was supposed to be a Pinterest inspired piece, but you know, Things never really turn out the way I want them to around here lately, so it totally doesn't look anything like what I was going for. But anyways, I started out laying down my first row, and then the next row I am putting directly on top, and you can see that they're kind of staggered. So I have one block that's overlapping two of the blocks below it, and then I'm adding my wood glue to the flat side of the block and then gluing it to the block underneath of it. So that's what's gonna help hold everything together here. Each row that I go up, I'm eliminating one block and we're just making it a little bit shorter until I am left with four blocks on the last row. So once that first section was done, I let that dry and then we're going to flip it over and repeat that same process on the back side so that the handle is in the middle and it's kind of going to be a basket look in the end. Not exactly what I was going for. I'll pop a picture of what I had intended to make up on the screen here. It was supposed to be like a geometric looking planter, but you know, it ended up looking more like a basket. So. Next time, I think I know how to get it to look the way I wanted. We'll see.
Once I had everything added, all of my blocks glued down and dried, I did just take it out to my garage and spray painted it with Rust-Oleum Slate Spray Paint. And now I'm taking some Dollar Tree Rub-On Transfers. I thought I had gold ones that were this little like foliage looking, but apparently I don't. I only had the black, so I thought that would be okay. It would be a little more of a subtle look than the gold ones would be. I just added on some of these rub-on transfers throughout the sides of the basket. And last, I don't know what happened to the lighting here, but I just added a bow. I tied it on with some jute string just so that I can change it out if I ever wanted to or take it off entirely. And that was it for this one. I have it staged to be a little fall right now since we are starting to head into that season. project was a struggle to put together but we'll get into that i'm gonna start out making four sets of the five blocks in a row just like i did in the first project and then i'm also going to add one block in between to create a rectangle Next, I'm going to create four sets of the three blocks in a row, just like we did the others. And then I'm going to start painting everything with my black chalk paint. Normally I like to glue everything together before painting or staining. This time, because of the way I wanted to put it together, I thought it would be easier to paint before finishing the build. Next, I'm taking these galvanized signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the star. They are just screwed on there, so I unscrewed that. It leaves a hole, but we don't need to worry about that here. You're not going to see that part. Next, I'm gonna take one of my rectangles and line it up to see where I need to cut this down. So the metal is going to be like a liner to this box that we are creating. So I placed a little line where I needed to cut it down and then using some tin snips, I started cutting this. And this is where I first started struggling with this project. My tin snips were just bending the metal. They were not cutting it. Apparently, I, my husband told me that I was just holding it at the wrong angle. I only had an issue with this very first one one that I cut down the rest of them cut down perfectly fine but I had to keep bending this piece back and forth and then cutting it and then finally eventually I got it to work I ended up using three of these signs one full one for each rectangle side and then another one for the like sides of my box which you'll see and I know that these overlap a little bit so I'm going to take my um, star bond super glue and just glue down the two metal pieces so that it creates a longer piece to fit inside of that rectangle. I didn't love the shininess of that galvanized metal so I ended up taking my dark gray elephant color chalk paint and toning down that shininess a little bit and then I also went in with my antique Waverly wax. I did dry it with my heat gun in between and then went in with my antique Waverly wax to stress it up a little bit to add some rusted looking elements to the metal. <laughs> Because of the way this metal was corrugated, it wasn't going to fully touch the wood blocks. So I only added my super glue to attach the metal where that was going to actually touch the blocks. And then taking my spray accelerator, I sprayed it on to quickly dry the glue. As soon as I glued the first piece of metal down, I realized I had not cut them down short enough so the sides of my box would fit together. I pried up the metal and then measured with the blocks where I needed to cut them down. Then when I added the side blocks on, I realized I still didn't cut the metal down short enough. I should have cut it down entirely and not just where the blocks needed to sit because the two edges of the metal were not sitting together right. So once again, I lifted up the metal, cut a sliver off, then glued it back down. And finally, I figured that part out and added the rest of my metal pieces in sides of the box. 
Next, I painted the inside part of the metal with my black chalk paint just to conceal it a little bit and then added on a bottom just using a Dollar Tree sign that I had painted black and that was it for this piece so it absolutely was a struggle to put together I wanted to add on some cute little handles on top I didn't end up doing that because I was so frustrated by the end of this I just wanted to be done with it but let me know what do you guys think this is definitely more of an industrial look but could certainly go modern farmhouse as well 